So I was uh, immediately blocked <laughs> and that comment was deleted. So here's the problem. Hey, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about something that, uh, I mean, it kind of comes with just being on the internet, but it's something I've been um, having a lot of personal experience with this week. And uh, it's health and fitness blogs who make posts um, based on completely uh, untrue or um, one-sided uh, information in order to paint a narrative to sell their products. So like what happens a lot is you'll see people say things that like, uh, you know, psychology says blah, 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 blah. Or um, if you're this type of person, then do this. And these things are incredibly harmful and dangerous because a lot of these blogs will have rather large followings and people really buy into what they're saying. Not only do they buy into it, but there's no way to get around the fact that we're all addicted to our phones, we're addicted to that stimulus, we're on social media all the time. I use it for work, but even though I use it for work, I'm still on it more than I would like to be um, or care to admit I, that I am. Uh, I acknowledge that. We're all on it too much. Um, when that's the case, the things that you're seeing over and over and over, uh, they become true, whether they're actually true in the real world or not. You know, the more you see it, the more real it becomes for you. You know, uh, if you believe it is so, it is so. That's how misinformation works. Not information. Information is true whether you believe it or not, whether you see it or not. But misinformation relies on the fact that you see it over and over and over and enough people buy into it that now it's real. So it's a big problem. Um, the other day I was scrolling uh, through like the browse function on Instagram and I came across an account that I've come across before many times actually and I've liked some of their posts in the past, not all of them, um, but some of them, the, the account is um, Calories Therapy. And uh, you know, they post random fitness or she posts random fitness stuff or nutrition things. And most of them are fairly innocuous. Like they're not, um, they're, they're, just, they're just fairly innocuous. They're not really saying anything too inflammatory and they're basically kind of generic ideas about health and fitness, which for the most part, it's fine. It applies to most people in most situations and great, excellent. Go ahead and put that out there. They did a post the other day that um, I took some issue with and I commented on it and I'm, I'll read you exactly what I said. I'll read their post. I'll read you exactly what I said and then I'll tell you what happened. So the, the post said, and I'll have it right here on the screen. The post said, psychology says, when you start taking care of yourself, you start feeling better, you start looking better, and you even start to attract better. It all starts with you. So I commented, and my intention was not to be inflammatory or rude. I wasn't yelling at anybody. I was just making a statement. Psychology does not say this. Psychology does not say anything. While leading a positive life is valuable, all of these statements are full of judgment and comparative expectation. So a psychologist wouldn't say this either. Um, so I was uh, immediately blocked <laughs> and that comment was deleted. So here's the problem. Let's start with uh, the statement itself, the, the post itself. Psychology says, I, I see this a lot actually. Psychology says, I see videos too on Instagram and TikTok where just some random person with no therapy background, no psychology background, they went to school for none of this, will say things like, psychology says that uh, if you don't like uh, being alone in a quiet room, you were severely abandoned as a child. They'll say like just art random bullshit. Like it's not true. Um, and it's extremely reductive. So I see this all the time. Psychology doesn't say anything. Psychology is the study of the mind, human behavior in context to a specific person in that specific environment at that specific time. So if we were both seeing even the same psychologist to cope with the same event, we would have very different experiences with that same psychologist because who we are as people 
is going to be vastly different. How we cope is different. Um, everything is different about us. So we're going to have a different experience. So psychology doesn't, doesn't have like a blanket statement that says, well, you went through this, so uh, here's the motivational quote for you and good luck. You'll, everything's fine now. It doesn't do that. So, but when you post things like that, people think, oh, well, this is true. It's on the internet. Somebody posted it and it has a hundred thousand likes. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be right. But l let's look at the statement. When you start taking care of yourself. Okay. So what does that mean? Starting to take care of yourself. Even, even just the statement itself is extremely judgmental because it's implying that you are not taking care of yourself if things are not going well for you. If you're not feeling well, if you're not looking well, if you're not attracting good things, you aren't taking care of yourself. So it's already saying that the implication is this is your fault. Whatever's happening, it's your fault. Um, and then again, like when you start taking care of yourself, what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. Are you saying if you can start sleeping eight hours a night and drinking more water, exercising, uh, keeping a diary, having an outlet for your creativity, speaking to a therapist, um, you know, getting in daily exercise, uh, taking time to turn off your phone. Are you saying all of these things? No, you're just saying when you start taking care of yourself. So you're giving no information. So already you're starting with just random garbage, motivational quote garbage. You start feeling better. So now you're saying that, okay, so let's say somebody infers, okay, well, taking care of self, taking care of myself means those things that I just mentioned. Great. You start feeling better. When? How? What does that look like? So if I don't start feeling better, does this not work? Am I doing it wrong? Am I inherently unworthy of feeling better after I started to take care of myself? You see the problem here? you start looking better. So again, now you're again, you're saying that like, you don't look good. You're not taking care of yourself. You don't feel good. You don't look good. Now look, I am a health and fitness educator. I, this is my job. I deal with this all the time. I am not a psychologist, but I do explain to people that yes, when you um, have a mostly clean, not entirely clean, but mostly clean diet, when you make uh exercise a daily activity that's not punishment it's not punitive um, when you drink more water when you find a therapist to speak with about your uh, trauma or whatever is uh, hurting inside of you when you do spend more time off your phone when you get more fresh air all these things um, you can start to Feel better about yourself, feel better physically. Um, that can result in uh, fat loss and muscle growth, which not everybody cares about, but a lot of people care about. So these things might benefit you, but it's not, I, if you're gonna say things like this, you, you have to give concrete examples of these things. And you also have to tell people that like, I also explain that if you don't see results as fast as you think you should, that doesn't mean that this, these new habits or behaviors are not working. Things take time and everybody's timeline is very different. So you can't compare yourself to someone else's timeline and, or, or their um, transformations. It's just, you have to start, no, you don't have to, you want to start somewhere. And there's going to be trial and error. You're going to figure out what works and doesn't work, what you like and don't like, and what fits in with your life and where you want your life to go. So you'll start looking better. So you don't look good. And you will even start to attract better. So again, this is saying that like those horrible people that you have been attracting because you don't take care of yourself, that's also your problem too. And it's also to say that if you take care of yourself, there will be no more negative people coming into your life. Again, this is it, it's wildly irresponsible and untrue. Um, so like the, the post itself, and then it all starts with you. Look, you have, you have a role in 
every situation, everything that's in your life, you have a role in it. But it doesn't all start with you. If you are walking down the street and someone runs up and stabs you in the face, it didn't start with you. It's not like, oh, well, you were walking down the street, so that's kind of your, your issue. That was, a, that was something that happened to you. Now, you have a role in moving forward, how that looks. But even that, <laughs> that's real trauma. Severe trauma that you don't necessarily have conscious control over how you're going to process that, especially not initially. People like to act like they're just robots and like, well, I choose not to be upset or I choose to move forward. Um, sometimes it's not a choice. That's what your subconscious is. It's not you consciously making a decision to do something. So everything about this statement is kind of harmful and untrue. And again, psychology does not say any of that. It doesn't say anything. So anyway, uh, calories therapy, they blocked me. Um, so now I'll say the other one that happened this week as well. And again, I don't know <laughs> why this all happened this week, or I guess it was last week. No, it was over the weekend. So yeah. So the post was from someone called a, a woman called the Honest Peach, and she describes herself as a um, wellness expert. And she said her the quote was, "My house is a disaster. I'm such a bad dad." Dot 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 said no dad ever because men don't grow up with the pressure of society telling them that their existence should revolve around housekeeping and child tending. So I said, this is reductive and completely not true. Men do feel this failure as well. Posts like this are just the bullshit. I was a little aggressive. Posts like this are just the bullshit bloggers use to frame a one-sided narrative in order to sell their product. Typical of people who call themselves wellness experts while creating division and animosity between people in need. More of a gross marketing tool used to paint a picture where women are the only ones with societal pressures while men just skate around carefree. We are all suffering, often from the same things. If your concern was actually wellness and you were an expert, you wouldn't need to tear down one parent in order to build up the other. Okay, look, I was a little aggressive in that one, for sure. I can, I can see that, reading it back. Um, I stand behind all of that. I'm not saying I don't, but, uh, yeah, I was a little antagonistic there, but you know, that, that, that is how I responded. It was an emotional, I probably had more of an emotional response to that because I am a single father. Um, and I do have a direct, uh, relationship with what she just said. So she, she's saying that men don't care if their house is in disarray and they're a parent and they don't relate that to their quality of parenting. Um, because men don't grow up with the pressure of keeping a clean house. Complete and utter garbage. It's not true. So, she, what she's saying is boys don't grow up getting screamed at for not making their bed or cleaning the room. Or they don't get hit when they spill shit in the garage. That's what she's saying. Only women are pressured with keeping a tidy house and that having a value on who they are. Men go through this too. They just do. Now look, there are a lot of societal uh, constraints and pressures put on men and women that are different. That's true. This is not one. And also, the thing I said at the end, you don't need to tear down one parent in order to build the other up. When I was a kid, I heard something about marketing. I don't remember where I heard it, but I heard something about marketing to the effect of you don't insult another brand to promote yours. And then I heard it later uh, when I started doing a little bit of marketing. And that was like, yeah, in order to sell your product, you don't need to shit on another product. Like yours should be good enough to stand on its own. You don't need to tear something down to build something up. That's not how this works. And you see what this person is doing. She wants to be seen as both the victim and the hero. So she's, a, I guess, I mean, just from the post, you could possibly discern, like, maybe she's a narcissist. So she's trying to be both the victim, because she's the only one who has, has to deal with societal pressure telling her to have a clean house. And then the hero by pushing forward this information. Um, the, an easy question with posts like this and this post is... What is this post trying to do? 
What is what is its purpose? What's the point of this post? What in here? Where is she giving helpful information? Where is she giving positivity? What about this is wellness? And where does her? I hate that I'm doing so many air quotes. Where does where does her expertise come in? And what is her expertise? If you're an expert, then that requires, for the most part, training, years of experience, um, and proof that your methods work. Looking at her page, she is a mom and she's into fitness and uh, she has a uh, posting recipes and that's it. Those are all good things. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see where the terms wellness and expert come into play. Also, wellness in general is just a bullshit term. It doesn't mean anything. Wellness. You're a, I'm a wellness teacher. I'm a wellness expert. What does that mean? And I'll, I'll tell you this. I work a lot with uh, therapists, a lot of therapists. They all hate that term too because it doesn't mean anything. And again, anybody can just say, I'm a wellness teacher. I teach wellness. I'm a wellness expert, in fact. Um so th this this woman is and she she blocked me and deleted the comment as well we're gonna get to that in a second um so this idea that sh she's trying to create an other right men are the other so direct all your hatred toward them because the thing that you that you feel that doesn't feel that the icky feeling that's because of them. Or if it's not because of them, they don't have to deal with it. So you should feel some sort of animosity or anger or frustration toward them. And again, we can get into the argument of like, well, yeah, patriarchal society set up these conditions. Fine. That is not what this post is about, though. It, she's trying to equate these two things, but it's just it, it's inaccurate and it's misleading. And again, it's just creating a narrative to sell you shit. Always be aware of that stuff. Like, no dad ever has grown up with the pressure of society telling them that their existence should revolve around housekeeping and child tending. That narrative for a woman um, did used to exist. It did. Now, boys were also punished and yelled at for not cleaning up the house, keeping clean. Yes. But that idea that like, oh, the woman of the 50s uh, has to just stay home. She can't vote and all this stuff. Yeah. That is not the case now. Not that there isn't a long way to go for women's rights. There certainly is. Uh, there's certainly a, just a ton of imbalance um, in politics, in the workplace. Yes. Great. That's a different topic, though. She Again, she's using that. She's using these actual struggles, real problems, and attaching it to this nonsense in order to make herself seem like she knows something, that she is a, quote, wellness expert. Um, it's just not true. So, okay. So both of these accounts blocked me and deleted the, my comment. Um, now I'll acknowledge that in, in this one to the honest peach, I was being a little antagonistic. I'm not like, I mean, I, you know, I say bullshit and I, you know, I do describe, you know, I air quotes, wellness expert. Like I was being a, a bit more aggressive here. I, I, I can acknowledge that. And if I were to approach it again, I don't know that I would say it differently because I do feel that way. Um, but, you know, perhaps it's not the most helpful way to get somebody to listen to that. But I don't think it matters in this case. Not that I shouldn't not that I shouldn't in the future handle it uh, calmer or more maturely. But I don't think it matters in this case because they would both of these accounts and many, many accounts like this. I have this my own experiences with these and many of my other friends. Um, who are in health and fitness, when they comment contrary to the post, they're almost always blocked and deleted. Why? Because so many of these, quote, wellness bloggers or health and fitness bloggers are incredibly fragile and they need to create a narrative where they are infallible. They can do no wrong. Um, they create their own echo chamber and want you to believe that everything they're saying is 100% right. They can't be wrong. This is a problem. You need to be aware of this always. It's completely dishonest and unrealistic. And look at their, they're creating an environment where their own page only shows themselves in a positive light. So for everybody looking, that's what they see. And even their own eyes, when they look at their page, they're like, I'm perfect. I am a 
I'm perfect. I'm never wrong. Nobody, nobody ever has a problem with anything I say. I don't need to reevaluate anything. I don't need to do further research. I, it, this is a significant problem. The only time I would block somebody is if they're being uh, hurtful. If they're, I've had people like call names to other people commenting on my posts or say, fuck you, you fucking whatever, this and that. Yeah, you're going to get deleted because you're being belligerent. Um, but even what I would say, I wouldn't block somebody for saying what I said here about you know the wellness expert I, I would i don't know if i would engage them in a conversation but i wouldn't block them um and i haven't i have comments like that on not like that but i have people who are like ah that sucks what this movement is no good or whatever when i'm teaching martial arts or whatever uh, and it's okay that's fine um so just eh, be very careful what you're constantly absorbing on your social media it becomes a mantra and you and and if you are a person who has a blog and you post stuff like this um don't be afraid of con uh, contrasting points of view and and don't also don't ignore it think about it like well is that true do i need to reevaluate this perhaps i'm wrong anyway just something to think about um don't forget to uh like subscribe uh comment share all that stuff uh check out my website grandbaker.com slash merch or just grandbaker.com there'll be a link in the description for my link tree for all my links music and martial arts and all that stuff there's a lot more coming soon uh thanks for listening and i'll see you next time be well do good make healthy choices peace